Hey guys, I'm Jake, and this week on Sliceform, we are going to be going into appearances. So for this week's first project, we are going to be making an American football to start off our appearance classes. This is a really good project. It's not all that difficult, but it's a very recognizable American icon. And so if something doesn't look quite right with the appearance, it's immediately identifiable that, hey, something's off. And so when we start going into the appearance section, when we make a pretty relatively simple project today, and it doesn't look quite right, you'll be able to tweak all the sliders and colors until it fits exactly what you think it should. Now we've done some work with appearances in the past where we've made a part that's usually made out of this steel uh, grayish material and then we've applied an appearance to it and it usually looks pretty good but often there's something that we need to tweak either the scale or the rotation or something else just doesn't seem quite right and that's what we'll be going over today. Uh, for this example if we just have this random box uh, I can type A for appearance uh, and I can go into my wood section and say, yeah, let's, let's click and drag on some cherry to this. And you can see it looks okay, but there's definitely some areas of improvement. Most noteworthy, if we go into the appearance section in this little window, you can see we still have the steel appearance. Now in a lot of projects, as soon as I apply appearance, I don't need the original one. It uses no function to me. So I can just right click and say, delete all unused. And then all I'm left with is the appearance that I have in this design. Now, when you go through the list of appearances, you can basically chalk it up into two different categories. Either you've got a solid color, uh, or you have an image that's being put onto your material. An image in this case would be a wood or the polystyrene that we've used before, like styrofoam, where it's a literal image that's being placed over an object and it will map around all the corners or all the curves. But if you go into the metal section, you'll find basically any of these is just a solid color. So for example, I'm gonna click and drag on Chrome. Now there's no image to it. It's just a solid color that has, well, a pretty good amount of shininess to it. And this is something that we can edit really easily. If we go up into this window and double click Chrome, you can see that we've got this color wheel and well, this color slide up here as well, where we can basically move around any color that we would like. Usually this window is basically just to kind of feel what looks right or what doesn't. Uh, nothing too accurate, just kind of you saying, hmm, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'm gonna try and hunt for it. If you do know the exact color value, then you can type it into this section. This is the RGB value, red, green, and blue. So you can see if I go all the way up to the top corner to white, it's going to max out at 255 on all of them. If I go all the way down to pitch black, it's going to say zero for all of them. If I go to absolute blue, then it's going to say, yeah, there's really no red. It's almost 100% maxed out on a blue and just a little bit of green. That's what our human eyes perceive as blue, basically. Um, but you can go even further. You could go into your color library up here and it will give you the full list of Pantone colors. So if you have a client that's trying to match a project to an already, um, an already existent color, or a company color, then this is where you can find it. And yes, they have categorized every single color you can possibly imagine in here. Now, some of the other appearances that you can place onto, well, any project that you're working on, not only a solid part, but you can also put an image. So the cherry wood that we just put on there is a great example of this, but if you're going into other fabrics or anything that where it's not just a solid color, there's actually different colors going on or textures uh, this is where you would have an image appearance. Now we can make simple edits to this just by double clicking uh, on the image in our window and we can mess it around with the scale to see if it matches the scale of our project. We can change around the rotation. Uh, we can also mess around with the roughness or reflectance as well. So if we have a really low roughness and a really high reflectance, then our material is going to be really, really shiny basically. Uh, and it's going to reflect a lot of light. Not too much when we're in the design workspace, but definitely when we go into the render section. Now, if we go back into this window, we can also select advanced, and this will give us a much more interesting list of things that we can mess around with. 
So going into the parameters, we've got the image of our cherry wood right here. And you guys can actually import any image that you would like and you can basically apply it to any project that you'd like. We're gonna be making some custom materials today. But you can see all of this uh, wood cherry number three color. This is actually loaded in your Fusion 360 program. But we can edit all of this if we would like. And as well as that, we also have our reflectance. That's very similar to what we said before, how much light is actually being reflected off of the surface. But strangely enough, below it, we also have this roughness map. And this is where things get a little strange, where a roughness map is basically how is the light being reflected off of it in a different way to show a texture. Now we don't actually have any 3D surface to this. This is just how the light is being bounced off of it is playing with it. If you have a really rough surface, something like, well, unmilled wood where it's super duper roughly cut um, in a CAD environment, then this is going to be much more intense. If you don't have a very rough surface, something like glass or plastic, uh, then this uh, roughness map isn't going to be very dark. It's gonna be pretty light. Uh, for this cherry wood, you can see it looks kind of sanded and polished. So our roughness map is very, very light indeed. But again, this is also something that you can change as well. Going down, we also have some translucency. This isn't gonna be very important with wood, just because you don't associate uh, see-throughness with wood. Um, so that's more associated with glass and plastics and other things like that. Um, similarly, emissivity would be how much uh, light is your part emitting. Obviously for wood, uh, very, very little. Uh, but you can have LCDs and LEDs in your appearance as well. We'll be going over this uh, during our render week of the project, where we will be having some uh, light bulbs that emit light. More importantly, down here, we have something called a relief pattern or a bump map. This is where we can apply some actual 3D texture to our material. And you can see, again, this is another image that follows the image of the cherry wood that we have in this example but all of the light sections will stay perfectly flat and all the darker pixels in this image will actually give a 3D surface to this when you take it into the render environment. Now this doesn't give actual real 3D-ness. If you were to take this into something like Cura or any 3D printing slicing softwares, it would still be just a flat box. But if you were to take this into a rendering software, then it would give you all of this 3D texture that you could mess around with and show different uh, appearances to your clients. And finally, a cutout, uh, this last section here, this is unused for this wood, but this is where you can also get another image where any black or white dots that you have on your image are actually where light is gonna be shown through. Uh, it's not visible on this project here, but if we cancel this, go down to our material, where is it? There we go, leather and cloth go into leather, we can grab leather perforated onto this material and you can see, hey, uh, all this white stuff, we're actually looking through our image, which is kind of funky. And you can see if you double click on our perforated leather and we scroll down to our cutout, you can see everywhere we have a black dot, that's where, well, we have a cutout where there's no information so we can actually see through our project. Uh, these are pretty rarely used in CAD, as I found. You can make your own in Photoshop and bring it in, uh, but it's a place of a lot of uh, a lot of trick trickiness, a lot of difficulty. Now, getting rid of all of that, we can start on our project for today. Now, for our project today, we will be working on an American football, and luckily, because the NFL actually has very rigid uh, definitions of what a correctly sized American football is, we can actually find uh, all of our dimensions online and make the correct size football. That has to be 11 to 11 and a quarter inches long and 21 to 21 and a quarter inches in circumference. Now, interestingly, the curve of a football is not actually a perfect mathematical relation. In fact, sometimes it's not even symmetric on either side. So it's not really able to make uh, an exactly perfect parabola or an exactly perfect three point arc. Uh, we are going to be having to sculpt it from scratch. And that's why we're gonna be pulling in something called a canvas, which is basically just an image that we can scale or move around and be able to calibrate it. So we can say, hey, the tip to tip is gonna be exactly 11 to 11 and a quarter inches. And then we'll be able to make a perfect spline that fits around that arc. 
Now you can take a picture of a football if you'd like, or you can grab ours from our website. Uh, but either way, we're going to be going into the insert menu, pulling in a canvas, and we are just going to be inserting something from our computer. Now we're going to be taking that image and selecting the front plane. And when we get a head on view, you can now see, well, I don't really know how large or small to make it. And that's why we're going to be calibrating it. Uh, you do want to note that our canvas opacity is set to about 50%. Uh, this will just be a little bit easier when we're actually drawing our sketch. Uh, if you find that you want to make it a little bit more translucent or a little bit more opaque, you can obviously move this slider any which way you want, but about 50 is going to be just fine for us. And we can just click OK. As we're working on an American football, we also want to work in American units. So go ahead and check out your document settings in your browser. Uh, this was set to millimeters from our last project. So let's go ahead and change our active units over to inches, and then I'm just going to set them as our default. So to calibrate our image to say, hey, this is exactly 11 and a quarter inches long, I'm going to go into my browser, expand the canvases, right click our image, which is called titled football, select calibrate, and then zoom in and click on the absolute left hand extreme point and the absolute right hand extreme point. There we go. You can see I'm clicking just barely outside of the curve where these curves are imaginary line. Uh, ends up. So I'm going to be typing in 11.25, hitting enter, and you can see that it is now scaled up perfectly. So the distance from either point is in fact 11 and a quarter inches. But we also want to be able to say that, hey, this left point is right on the origin. So again, I'm going to be right clicking where it says football in our browser. I'm going to edit my canvas. And I'm going to be moving this around so I can line up this point as close as I can possibly get to the origin. If you find the origin isn't turned on like it is on my screen, uh, you can just go to your browser and click the little eyeball icon next to where it says origin. And like I said, we can just move this over and get as close as we can get it. That looks just about perfect for me. Then we can click OK and that will solidify it in place. So I'm going to get rid of the origin and then I'm going to make a new sketch on that front plane. And this is where we can use our line tool to snap onto the origin, move over horizontally to the right. This wants to be 11.25 inches, so it matches up uh, with our image. And then instead of using the three point arc, we're actually gonna go into create and select spline and then fit point spline. Fit point spline is always the little funky uh, way to make an arc that isn't mathematical but if you have an image like this where you're trying to map around as close as you can get, it's really the best way to go. So I'm going to be clicking on the origin, clicking at the, well, the highest point that I can see, and then the end point. And instead of hitting enter or anything like that, I'm just going to move my cursor over to this little green check mark and click it. Now, as you can see with this, our curve isn't mapping around the actual perfect arc. Uh, of our football and this is where all these green appendages come from. As you can see I can change its length and I can also change its arc to kind of twist it and this is a bit of an iterative design where you kind of prod and poke all of them until you get it as close as you possibly can but as soon as you change one of them then it obviously affects the other so you're just going to be working back and forth back and forth until you can get it as perfect as you possibly can. This may take a couple minutes but getting it perfect really can be possible. All right, that looks pretty dang good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this sketch and I can actually turn off my canvas as well. So now we've just got this perfect arc. Uh, if you want to, you can obviously click this blue line and fix it to make it green so it can't move, um, but it's not really super necessary for us. Now, obviously, on an American football, it isn't just a perfect revolution all the way around. It's actually put into quarters. So instead of having uh, just a full 360 degrees rotation, we're only going to do 90 degrees, add some fillets to make it look like the seams, and then do four patterns and combine everything together. So that's the plan. So let's go into Create, add on our Revolve tool. We only have one profile, and our axis is obviously going to be this bottom uh, horizontal line. Um, like I said, 360 degrees makes it just too smooth, just too perfect, which we don't want. Uh, for our angle, we would like to type in 90 degrees, 
and then click OK. And this will give us that quarter football. Then we can go into our modify section and add a fillet to the two curved lines over here. And adding in about an eighth of an inch of fillet seems to look about right. We don't need to put it on this inner section because this is going to be totally sealed up. So let's click OK to get rid of that. And then we can apply our circular pattern. So again, go back into your create menu, go into pattern, circular pattern, and then instead of the faces, I actually want to revolve a body. And that's going to be this quarter football that we have here. Uh, just like the revolution, the axis is going to be this bottom horizontal line. Uh, it always uh, puts to three as the quantity, so obviously we want to pop that up to four of them, and then click OK. And already we've got a pretty close football uh, in not that much time, so that's pretty cool. Now, if you go into your browser, you can see that we actually have four different bodies for each of our quadrant football. So I want to combine them into just one body. I have no need to have four different sections. Let's just make it into one right off the bat. So let's go into modify. Uh, then I'm gonna go down to combine and I can basically just click body one, hold down shift, click body four. And this will highlight all the bodies in between those two selections and then just click OK. And then you can see all of them are combined. Now there is only one body. Um, currently, we have for our display settings, we've got all of our black edges on here and not tremendously realistic. So let's just get rid of those real quick. Uh, at the very bottom of our navigation bar, we're going to go into our display settings, go up to visual style and then select shaded. And there we go. Now we have a smooth, slightly more realistic football. Now for this class, we're going to be working with two different appearances for the main football. Obviously it needs to be kind of a reddish brown leather and we can work with an appearance that's already built into Fusion or we can actually make our own custom appearance and add it on there. And then we can flip in between each one to see which one you prefer. Everything about appearance is just what works with your eye or what your client really wants it to look like. So just making one appearance is usually not the best idea. Kind of toggling between a couple will give you the best result. So to check out the first one, let's click A for appearance. And you can see under our leather menu, we actually already have leather mat and it's colored red. So let's click and drag that onto our body. And you can see it's pretty dark, but it does have that kind of classic football texture in there. Uh, it's a little dense. So I'm going to double click the leather mat and I'm going to change the scale just a little bit. Let's change it to about 75. There we go. And then the texture of the leather is a little bit closer to what you'll find uh, on a normal football. And you may say, hey, that looks great. That's fine. But let's see if we can make it even more realistic. Now to make our own custom appearance, we need to add on three different images. We need to add on our leather image, our roughness image, and our bump map or our pattern bump. Uh, as soon as we add all these, we can basically make a brand new custom material that we can edit in any which way we want. If we want to make it more rough, less reflective, change around the scale, change around the rotation, uh, add any other features that we would like, we can do it totally customizable. So we'll start off by right clicking uh, our leather that we have on there and we want to duplicate it. The reason we're duplicating the leather one and not the solid one is because we want to be able to put in an image. If we just duplicate the steel, then we'll only be able to change around that single color. That's why there's two different appearances that we can mess around with. Now we can double click our newly duplicated appearance and we can actually change the name as well. So we're going to name it uh, Custom Brown Leather. And if we go into the advanced section, you can see that we can actually change out the image, the roughness map, and the relief pattern or the bump map. And you can see for this material, because the leather for football is just so much more textured, it's so much more rough, it's got all these dimples on there. Uh, you can see our bump map is actually a lot more static -y. It's a lot more chaotic, uh, which will give us a much more texturable uh, material when we go into our rendering stage. But I hear you cry, Jake, where do we find all of these bump maps? And that's where you can just go online. If you look up any different materials that you can render, you can find a whole list of assortments of different fabrics, uh, stones, metals, paints, all these different stuff in different uh, stages of weathering or array or rustiness. 
uh, that people use all the time for different CGI or video games or computer graphics, anything of that sort. They will always find a texture online and then apply it to their material in the exact same way that we're doing today. So one of my favorite places to go is this website called Polyhaven. Uh, we are not sponsored by them in any way. They are a completely free open source website. I just really like them. I use them for a lot of my projects. Uh, where basically they've got a huge, huge library uh, for different environments called HDRIs, uh, different textures that we can put on any of our materials. That's what we're gonna be using today. And they also have a bunch of different models that you can just pull into any of your environments if you wanted to. So under the textures, if we click browse textures, uh, you can see they've got a whole list of assortments of cracked earth, wooden floorboard. God, that looks like Mars. You can add on any of these different materials to any of your projects, but we're more worried about different fabrics and materials for today. So I'm going to expand the fabrics section and the leather red they have there looks kind of cool. The brown leather I think looks a little bit closer. So if we click this, you can go ahead and download it and this will include this 4K image, uh, your roughness map and your relief map. Uh, if you don't want to go through here, you can also go and find all of our files on our website. So with our new custom material in place, I'm just going to click the name of the image and then I can just go ahead and put in all of our new appearance. So I want to put in this 4K brown leather image right there. You can see it already automatically updated there. Uh, but we also need to put in the custom roughness that matches with it. Uh, that's going to be the rough 4K right there. We can also add in our bump map right there. Uh, it's, you also will find it uh, called underscore DISP. That means displacement. Uh, very, very similar terminology, but slightly different. For our use, it makes no difference. Uh, but now we've got a bump map, a bump map that now matches uh, the image of our material as well. So we can just click apply and then cancel. And now we've got a brand new material that looks flat right now, but when we take it into our rendering menu, it'll look much better. So let's cancel this and let's go into our rendering area. So I want to go up to our top left-hand corner and click where it says design and go into our rendering environment. And there you go. Now it looks a little bit more different. Now we've got, we've, now we've got a light casting off of it and shadows and much more interesting, uh, much more interesting features uh, that are coming off of it but it's kind of in this blank gray void universe, which I'm not really liking, not where I picture a football. Uh, so let's just very quickly change the settings. So in our setup, I'm gonna click scene settings right there. Um, under the background, I don't just want a solid color. I actually would like an environment in here as well. Uh, and I think the natural one is this kind of uh, film stage or a photo booth. Um, again, it's not where I imagine a football in my head. I'm thinking more of a field or, or a football pitch, to be honest. Um, so let's go into our environment library tab right here. And you can see that we've got a bunch of them that are already preloaded. Or anytime you see this little download image, you can just download it and then click and drag it onto that. Now, I already have the field downloaded. So we're just going to click and drag that onto the background and it will then update with my football in a much more realistic kind of country yard uh, where it looks a little bit better. So now in this environment, I can toggle between my two appearances. Which one do I like the best? So I can say A for appearance, and now I've got my brown, my custom brown leather that I have on there that I think looks really fantastic. But I can also click and drag on Fusion's custom one as well, and I can see, hey, which one looks the best? I think the brown leather looks a little bit more interesting. It looks a little bit more realistic. Uh, it's like a weathered uh, American football in my mind. Um, but we're, we're gonna keep with the custom brown leather for now. So let's click close and then go back to our design area. So now that we've got our football looking pretty dang good, we're gonna be working on the laces on the very top. So to do this, I'm gonna be turning off the body and making a new sketch on the front plane. Now I want to be using the profile uh, that we use to make that. So I'm gonna be turning on sketch one, and typing P for project, selecting that curve and clicking okay. Now I can type O for offset and select this line. And I want to be making an offset of 332nd of an inch, just above that surface. 
If you find that your red line is actually below, you can always go into this little dialog box and click the flip button, or you can type in negative. Either one works. But we can just click OK. And we want to basically uh, have some end caps for the very top lace. So I'm gonna use my line tool. I'm gonna to draw a vertical line from that offset plane to that projected line. I'm gonna do that on either side. There we go. So the distance between these two lines wants to be six inches, very, very simply. But I also want to make sure that they're perfectly symmetric as well. There's a bunch of different ways that I can do this, but probably the easiest way would be to make a construction line that I can make these two symmetric about. So again, using our line tool, I'm gonna to be clicking from that bottom red line, doesn't make any difference to us, moving upwards, and then clicking X to make that construction line. And we want to dimension this at half of our football's length. So 11.25 divided by two. Then we can go into our symmetry tool in our constraints menu. And you have to do it in this order. I wanna select both of my lines that I would like to be symmetric and then select my mirror line. If you do any of that out of order, it just simply won't work. So after that, we can click finish sketch and then we've got an enclosed profile. And this is what we want to extrude. So let's click E for extrude, select that profile, and we want to push it out 0.25 or a quarter of an inch because we're only gonna be making a half of the laces of the two laces on top. And to give it a little bit more of a fabric feel to it, we can, climb, we can type F for fillet. And I'm going to be selecting this top surface and the four vertical lines as well. Don't need to click the underside whatsoever. And these want to be a 16th of an inch in radius. And there we go. This will give it a little bit more uh, of that taut leather fabric uh, that, we're, that we're all kind of used to. And then we can mirror this new body that we just made about the front plane. There we go. Now we get two side by side and you can see we've got those two fillets that kind of crest into each other. That looks perfect. Now to make the perpendicular laces that kind of go across all of these, we can basically just make one lace that goes across it and then basically pattern it about the path or the swept path that we've made here. So to do that, we can actually make a brand new plane that runs exactly halfway down this football. So again, 11.25 divided by two, and then we can make a new sketch on that new construction plane right there. So to make the sketches on top, we are gonna be using our three point arc and just make two vague ones on either side, nothing special. And then we're gonna be joining them with our line tool. Now the only constraints that we need to add on is that we want these two arcs to be perfectly uh, co-centric, so they share the exact same center. And we want these two points to be 1.5 inches apart from each other, and we also want it to be right in the middle, so we can say from the origin it is 0.75. So that'll center it really nicely, so we can only change the radius of them now. We also want to be adding an equal constraint to these two lines as well. And this bottom point, we also want to click and drag it so it is coincident with the origin. There we go. Now we can adjust all of our uh, dimensions with it as well. So we can click D for dimension and this outer radius wants to be 3.375 and this bottom one wants to be 3.255. There we go. And to make sure our two end caps uh, are behaving correctly, we can also add in a little construction line on the bottom that we can make them symmetric about. So just like on the last one, select our two lines that we would like to be symmetric, then select our construction line. There we go. And then to make sure they're pointing in the right direction, we can just use our coincident tool, select each point, and then select our origin and that'll make everything fully defined and ready to go. So let's hit finish sketch. Now we don't want to actually extrude this profile because we don't want it to go directly outwards on either side. We actually would like it to follow along that curve. So we go into the create section, go to sweep, 
and we can select the profile we just made and then for the path we can just select any of these lines up here either one will work now we don't want it to cut we actually want to make a join but also this is saying hey you're going to be going the entire length uh no we actually only want it to go just a little bit on either side and instead of having like an inches like saying hey well, let's go a quarter inch on either side it's actually a percentage of the entire path so for the distance on either side we're going to be typing in 0 0.05 0 0.05 left 0 0.05 right and then the orientation we actually would have liked to keep it as perpendicular not parallel and just like we did for the other laces i'm going to type f for fillet uh, select this top surface and then the four posts or the four vertical lines on either side and we would like to make this a sixteenth of an inch in radius now like i said we actually want to have uh, this perpendicular be patterned on either side but we can't use circular pattern because this isn't a circle and we can't use rectangular pattern because we actually want it to follow an arc, which is why we're going to be using a new tool under create and pattern called pattern on path, where you basically se select the object you would like to pattern, the path it wants to follow, and then exactly how many. It's a very, very equal mixture between sweeping and rectangular patterning. So we're going to start off by changing our type to features. And the features we would like to pattern are going to be the sweeping and the fillets that we have here on our timeline. For our path, we want that to be our original arc that we made. Uh, for the direction, we actually would like it to be totally symmetric on either side. And for the orientation, we don't want it to be identical. We want it to actually follow the path direction. So you can see as I drag this arrow, well, it only gives us three. We want to change that. So let's bump that up to seven. And then you can click and drag your arrow until, again, it looks about right. For me, about 2.6 looks pretty good, but you can absolutely mess this around so that it looks perfect to you. That's the whole point of this class. It's an appearance. It isn't exact value. It's what looks correct to your eye. So we can turn back on our football body and turn off our sketch. We won't be needing that anymore. And although steel laces does look kind of cool, um, not tremendously accurate so let's add on some white leather so nicely enough fusion actually already has a white leather in their fusion library that looks really cool so you can click and drag this on there but if you zoom in you can see it looks pretty new it looks pretty uh contrasting to the really rough leather that we have below so let's see if we can add in some different roughness and some different uh, bump maps to see if we can make it look a little bit different so I can go into my window and right click this, duplicate it, and then we can mess around with this as well. We can also change the name. So we can call it some, something like uh, custom white leather. Uh, in our advanced window, we can actually keep the image that we have on there, but you guys can find a different roughness map and a different bump map on our website. So again, we can click the name of it. Uh, we can change the roughness. And we can also change the bump map as well. And when we click apply, you will be able to see that this will change just a little bit. So I can click and drag this on there and it looks a little bit deeper. All the grooves will look a little bit more, uh, well, exemplified. And then to finish this material off, we can also mess around with the scale as well. So if we go too large, you can see it just looks kind of pixelated and just not too good. Uh, and then the lower that you go, you may find that there's a certain point where it just looks perfect to you. I think that looks pretty close. So then let's finish it off going back into our rendering workspace. And that looks really fantastic. Could have fooled me. All right, guys, this project is all done. Now go aside and play some football.